All right, Ian. Patrick. You know we're fans of the Quibi. We're fan, oh. we're fans of the ten minute bite size Quibites of of online streaming entertainment that you can only do basically on your phone or tablet, and we're having trouble hooking up to TVs because that's a smart business model. So Quibi is shutting down. Um, only less than uh less than what eight seven months into its life. It started uh, early April. It launched and now it's it's they're deciding they're winding down. The articles that I read said that it was six months of actual um, operation operation, and then I think it's I think as a whole it's under two years old. Sure, but um, for for the most part though, people only discovered this around the Super Bowl when they started running awful ads. Right, you know, and that's when I found out about it. And we then I've been following this, and most people have been, are more obsessed about following this this slow moving. Uh, car wreck uh, that that's been happening. I, I obviously I say this every time we talk about something ending. I'm not happy that people are losing their jobs, but I there is I'm not gonna lie there is there is a bit of joy in seeing these horrible ideas fail miserably, um, because in the end it's a lot of capital that is invested it's a lot of money that is wasted that could be used towards any number of things for these stupid pet projects that have no and that's the other thing i find it hard to believe that anyone who worked at quibi besides katzenberg oh they knew it was ending they knew they knew it was bullshit they knew it was ending and i would like to hope that they all had something on the back burner but um yeah, this was just a horrible idea. It was it's it's a perfect example of someone creating a problem that needs to be solved. It's an ego project. Um, it's an ego project, and I, I I take great joy in in lambasting ego projects. Um, you know, as someone said to me, and I think it's you know it's true. This is one of those ideas where Katzenberg was probably sitting there, you know, like a grandpa, and goes, "Oh, these kids, they're always on their phone." So they're always on their phone. Well, why don't we make this uh, this this thing that you can only use on your phone? Because there are plenty of things that you can use on your phone and off your phone that um, fit the bill. It, it, it's like someone saying that they need to make a video game system that appeals to only families because a video game system can't possibly appeal to families and non-families there's and not no, understanding what's in the marketplace currently there's there's no yeah. reason yeah they, they, there's no reason why something has to be specifically only for something there's just no reason for that you're targeting you're targeting a demographic and niche believing that i can target this better than anything else that exists that is already picking up that audience and, and fulfilling a need i'm thinking i can do it better because i say so right basically um Quibi, I don't think would have been a great idea, even if you could use it on your TV or your uh, internet. But at that point, it would have just been another streaming service, and I think it would have had depending. It, it would have lived or died based on the content. Um, Quibi did not live or die based on the content. And from what I hear, the content was not great, but it didn't even get it. I don't think it. The, the content didn't even have a chance because the idea was so bad. When you when your when your entertainment streaming service is not marketed around the entertainment and more about how you are dicing up the entertainment, we have a problem. Because people don't think about in what time frame they could watch something as their the main push them to watch something. They just want to know, what can I watch? Right. How easily can I watch it? Not, well, I got to think of a scenario where I want to watch something that's in 10 minute chunks or less because you said that's the way I am consuming the, the entertainment. And, and and they're trying to blame, what, I, what pisses me off about this, is they're blaming COVID. They're, trying they're to blaming blame a COVID. pandemic, and, and at least partially. Now, they're, remember in that, that fucking awful article uh, a couple months ago we talked about where he was blaming it part and, part and parcel. Now he's like, it was partially p- a pandemic. It hastened your demise, uh, maybe, but this is, the people are, you know, still going outside running errands and not watching Quibi. They're not watching in the house. Like there, there's no reason why where you are at should influence what type of entertainment you are you are getting. That, that doesn't make any sense. Something's either entertaining or it's not. No one downloads on their phone uh, a YouTube app, a Netflix app, and then goes, you know what? These don't cover my bases. I need to download this Quibi app specifically for when I'm on the bus or on the yeah. train. 
this is my this is my train time app. No, no one thinks like no that. one creates folders on their phone for like okay, I'm using the, you're gonna use these apps on the plane, th these apps at work, these apps at home. No, that's not how we structure things on our brain. That's it's not about when it's about just oh well, how do I am I gonna be entertained by this? I'll figure out to myself for myself how when that happens. It. You don't fucking tell me when I should watch something that you're pushing at me, and that's what this service did. Yeah, it was trying to decide for me how I should, how and when I should be entertained. It knew us better than we knew ourselves. It, and that's go, always, man. always a disaster. And by uh, boomers trying to market to, to millennials and, and, and Generation Z, you know, like they're trying to market to people 50 years younger, 40 years younger than them, not understanding that. I wonder, I wonder if Katzenberg knows like what Twitch is. I wonder if he does. I wonder if he knows. He probably knows what TikTok is. Now people use it and figure, well, this is TikTok, but for you know Hollywood stuff, like that's not how it works. I feel like if he, if I feel like he doesn't know what YouTube is, uh, because I, I mean, I'm trying really hard not to make comparisons here, but to something else. But it's just, it exists. What what he wanted to make already exists. YouTube stuff. Just by nature of the 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 the, um, uh, the platform is generally short. You don't need to impose artificial time sure. limits on this stuff. YouTube did that for a long time and got rid of it for the better. But a lot of people on YouTube are still making things that fall under the ten minute mark because that's what people's attention span is demanding. Sure. You don't need to set the artificial limits. You don't need to say this is only for when you're mobile. Um, when YouTube people is already doing that, yeah, people can press a pause button and come back. That's a thing. A pause button's a thing. Like that's what's so weird. It's like these, and then and watching things like the big thing with which are getting sued for now is that you know they they, were, they made things that you could watch like watch full movies and they shot things in what panor uh, what is this not panorama what mode is this what is this mode versus panorama that's a portrait portrait mode. No one wants to watch movies in fucking portrait mode. No. You don't see anything. It's like looking through a goddamn keyhole and, and looking at things. You want things widescreen because that's how we view things in real life is wide. L landscape. Yeah, and landscape, not portrait. So it's, it's insane. And yes, people are out of a job, but they got jobs and a lot of people made entertainment that they wouldn't have from, from people that lost a lot of money. A lot of investors losing a lot of money. Um, so like people got entertainment was created that wouldn't have been created. So that's actually a positive thing. And some of this was they won an Emmy, so there obviously is po there's, people got work in, in, in a bad pandemic year. In, in last year, people still got work, so like people were paid to work, and people are getting their severance. It looks like so that's good. They're being laid off. Um, but in an open letter, they said uh, CEO Meg Whitman said Quibi's failure was likely due to the core of the idea as well as the coronavirus pandemic. So this is what I talk about about experts and people that uh, that when they feel horribly are allowed to continue. Uh, Katzenberg and Whitman may go off and do something else. They don't deserve to after a huge failure of this to me. Like this, I mean, this is, this, this they'll write, they're going to do documentaries and books no, this about is this. disastrous. Yes, there's going to be, uh, there, uh, there, there are books to be written about hubris um, when it comes to this. I mean, you talk about people like, oh, New Coke was a disaster. New Coke wasn't, wasn't a billion dollar disaster. Like it might've lost a hundred million or a couple hundred million, but like Coca-Cola is still around. Like they, they realize this is a disaster. We have to stop this uh, here. This is a billion dollar and billion dollar shutting down in six months disaster. This I is thought a, it was almost two. What was? I thought it was almost two billion. Well, I think what was going to happen is I think they're, they're not going to spend the money they were going to outlay for a program for next year. So it's at least a billion dollars. Gotcha. Um, I think what they decided to do, yeah, they raised 1.8 billion, but I think they're going to, they're being smart. We're not going to use the last, whatever, half a billion bucks. We're not that stupid, but they're going to try to probably, what they're, they're going to try to probably do is sell off some of the shows to Hulu and, and Prime and, and Netflix and all three of those companies are going to start just laugh in their faces. Like, why do we want your hand-me-downs that mm -hmm. we didn't want? Like, with the, with the expect, exception, there'll probably be some stuff that survives, or there'll be a movie here or there that ended up being, you know, that'll get well, the picked up. The other thing I read, and I think we talked about it on a previous Quibi topic, is that they don't even own the the programming that they were... Yeah, it was basically a, basically a li like a, like a whatever, three-year licensing fee they were basically paying for some of this stuff. So it's, it's insane. So, so it's, it's just batshit. You've got nothing. So I guess you can sell the license for a few years until it's gone. So yeah, if I'm Netflix, I'd be like, well, fuck you. Like yeah. I'm not buying it myself. Like I to, you're transferring a license over me. Good point, Ian. I don't know if that's for everything, but that's what we, we brought up before. Um, they shelled out. 
Yeah, it says in this article from Variety, actually, Quibi doesn't own any of the big budget premium content. They don't own the big stuff. They probably own like the little shitty shows. Uh, they shelled upwards out of $100,000 per minute. That's insane. That is. So oh, here it is. Seven year license on its short form series. Uh, after two years, content owners had the right to assemble the shows and distribute them elsewhere. That's okay. Yeah. So it's, it's a two year, basically two year exclusivity. And seven. It, so they don't even get this stuff forever. They don't get uh, Chrissy's Court forever. They get it for only seven years. So, like, you have to go back and, and keep get creating new content. Now, yes, obviously Netflix and Hulu and Prime and, and whatever else, they're not... And, well, actually, the other ones that I see, the Apple TV th thing you're picking up, is that you have to constantly make new content. But to replace content that's there, that's the issue. That you pay, you pay to make. It, it, it doesn't make any sense. It doesn't make any sense. All right. Well, that's about all I can say about this. I mean, obviously, we, I, I, I want to see the documentaries now. I want to see the tell-all books. I want to see the interviews with the employees about how 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 crazy it was that reportedly uh, Whitman and Katzberg hated each other and worked on different floors and never talked face to face. Like, how could you do that and run a company? Yeah, it's insane. Uh, in its first year, they they plan to launch 175 original series and 8,500 episodes, but clearly that was not going to happen. And again, this was going to be five bucks monthly with ads, five dollars, and eight dollars without ads. So they're so they're already up to like Hulu, like that's what you pay for Hulu or Disney Plus yeah. at eight bucks, and, and you don't have any of the names. You don't have the good content, and you have a you watch on your fucking phone. They, I think they figured out some of the stuff eventually, and no, no it's not it's not memeable. You can't share it easily. Oh yeah, you can't do screenshots and stuff. The most like famous that. meme created was someone taking on their cell phone of the, of the woman with the golden arm. That that's the only thing I know about from Quibi was that that was the memeable thing because they couldn't believe this was actually a show on Quibi. Oh uh, right, yeah. I want to be buried with my golden arm. It's it, it's killing it's killing you. I, I don't want to take my golden arm off. That that I couldn't tell if it was serious or like just a big joke. I think Sam and Raimi was involved somehow in that. Either producing or writing, I don't know. Like it, it was it was like the easiest probably pay for some of these people ever. That they got, they they know they knew this was going to be a disaster. They got paid. Good for them.